Can you imagine being able to play that? Well, I'm going to show you how to play it right now. Let's get to it. Right, so all you need to do to get started is put your left hand two octaves below middle C, so your little finger is on that C and your thumb is on G, a position that we've got quite used to with the previous other lessons. Now, what's really nice and easy is that we just play both C's and G's at the same time and then C and A at the same time. So it's a slight stretch with the thumb just to move it slightly up. And all we have to do is alternate between those two pairs. So we've got C and G together twice and C and A together twice. Now, to really create that blues sort of feel, all you've got to do then is put a bit of swing to it. We mentioned this before, but essentially the best way to think about it is scooby doo be scooby doo be where you've got a long note followed by a short note continuously to create that swung rhythm. So straight would sound like this. And it doesn't really work, but swing sounds like this. See how that suddenly comes together. Now, that's position one, let's move to position two. Position two is just exactly the same shape, but shuffled up to F and C. So we've got F and C at the same time, and then F and D at the same time. That same sort of paired structure, so we go F and C to F and D, and alternate. Then back to position one. Cool, so we've got position one and position two. Now we've got position three. All we've got to do is move the left hand up to little finger on G and our thumb on D. Then stretch to the G and the E. And same idea, set of pairs, repeated. And we've got the pattern. We move to position two. F and C again and back to C. And suddenly the left hand is already building up. So we've got those three core positions, C and G to C and A, F and C to F and D. G and D to G and E, and then position one again was C and G. So those are the three patterns. Now we need to put it into the 12 bar blues structure. So that means we've got to play them in a certain order. I'm gonna count them through and play them now so you get an idea of what that sounds like. One, two, three, four, and change, one, two, and change, one, two change one and change one and change two so that's the left hand sorted and all you're gonna have to do now is practice that until you're confident so you don't have to think about it and then you can move on to the next part if you're finding it just a little bit difficult slow it down and then slowly speed it up. So for the right hand, all we've got to do is put our hand with our thumb on middle C, our third and fifth finger on E and G, and we start with this, which already sounds awesome. So you're gonna go hit the C with your thumb and then slide off the E flat onto the E with the G at the same time. So E flat to E and G. Do that a few times to get it stuck in your head. Now. We're gonna go C to F and A. We've done a slight stretch. Sounds pretty nice. And now we're gonna go C to G and B flat. Probably not with those fingers, let me double check. No, I'd do three and four on that one just because it, it, it suits me more comfortably. Choose whatever uh, suits you most. Uh, but essentially, for that first pattern, we've got C, E flat to E and G, C to F and A, C to G and B flat with three and four and then back down again. So then it's C to F and A, to C to E flat and G. And we end on the C. So that whole phrase on this section is this. C, E flat and G, C, F and A, C, G and B flat, C, F and A, C, E flat and E and G. And a final C. And suddenly, that really basic pattern sounds awesome. It just, it just, I love playing it. Now, like we had in the left hand, all we've got to do is shuffle up the right to be F. So now we've got F and the A flat, which we're gonna drag back onto A and C. See that? Same thing as here, but just on F. Then we go F to B flat and D, still three and five. Then we go to F, C and E flat with three and four. So we went F to A flat and A and C. F to B flat and D, F to C and E flat, and then back down again, F to B flat and D, F to A flat and A and C. 
and it suddenly builds up. So first pattern, second pattern. Now we've got our third pattern, we've had the C, we've had the F, now we've got the G. Now because this only lasts for one bar, we, I'm just going to suggest just do this. So G, same as before, B flat to B and D, that drag, G to C and E, and then do that again, just that same repeat, G, B flat, B and D, G, C and E. I wouldn't bother going higher up, it's just not needed. Uh, How does it go? See how it just, you don't need to go any further, because it's only one bar. And then when you're coming back down, you want just one bar of the uh, F as well. So there's a slight variation to this. Instead of going, we're just going to repeat the first two little parts. And that technically should be easier. And then we're back to C again. Let's go through the right hand just on its own to give ourselves a bit of context. So remember, it's for 12 bar blues. We went through this in the left. So in the right hand, it's going to be exactly the same pattern, exactly the same jumps, but with slightly different fingers. So we've got four bars to cover this part. That covers two just by itself. So we play it again. Maybe we're out of the C and it sounds kind of good. So that's already our four bars sorted. Now, to get our next two bars, starting on F, we play this. Just play that once, and that's your two bars, because your left hand's going quite a bit quicker. Now, but go back to part one, where we only needed two bars. Then we've got the last little ending bit, where I said we don't need to go too extreme with the G. Just do that repeating backwards and forwards. Same with the F. Now, all you need to do is get back to C and finish it off with the full up and down. Hopefully, that all makes sense. So now you've got the right hand sorted as well. Same thing as the left. If you can't play it fast or play it anywhere near what I'm doing, that's fine. Slow it down and then bring it up to speed once your fingers are really confident where they're going on the piano. And then we can move on to step three, putting those hands together. Okay, so both hands together means that we've really got to make sure we've got hands separately sorted out. And if you've got that, then let's bring it together really slowly. So the most important thing here is to recognize that the thumb in the right hand plays the first note. It's the upbeat, which gives you that really syncopated and funky rhythm. So we play the C with our thumb, and then we join in with the left hand. And the really nice thing is, because this is swung quavers, we, we don't need to get into quavers now, but basically they're all the same sort of rhythm. The right hand and the left hand play simultaneously once that first note has been played. So it should sound like this, and I'll play it really slowly. And then the left hand keeps going. And then we repeat. Remember, that C comes in uh, on its own, or technically with that C and A. Now we're on the repeat. Make sense? They're all tying together. But what's going to end up happening is your left and your right hand, they're going to get a little bit confused because the left is going up and down instantly. Meanwhile, the right hand's going up three and down. So it's going to be slightly different rhythms and it's going to take your brain a little bit of time to get it, but practice daily, be consistent, and it'll suddenly just click. And then you can slowly speed it up. So that's part one, of course. Now we move both hands up to the F. Same idea. Right hand plays just a little bit quicker. There we go. Did you notice I didn't actually do the right pattern here? But it still worked. Highly recommend just experimenting yourself. You can still do, of course, the uh, all the way up. And all the way down. But if it sounds cool, give it a shot. Give other variations and patterns a go. But enough of that. We've had the F. We go back to C. Now we've got the G where we're just alternating back and forth. This will be one of the easier ones for your left and the right hand to play because they're both going up and down uh, simultaneously. C 
See, there's sort of a, a pattern, a symmetry to that. Then we have the F. Same symmetry, and then back to position one to finish it. And all together, it should sound like this. So essentially, your practice for the week is to get that left hand playing confidently, so you almost don't even have to think about it while you're playing it. Then, if that's sorted, move on to the right hand, do the same thing, make sure it's as confident as the left hand. Now, bring them both together, start it slow, and slowly speed it up. And in about a week, five or ten minutes of practice a day, you'll have it sorted in no time. So, thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button. If you want to see more of this sort of content, make sure you're subscribed. And if you want to be notified every single time a lesson appears, Saturday, 10am, then hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time.